What's up everybody? Welcome to the Vin Diesel bus tour. This is a 2002 Ford 7.3 Power Stroke diesel short bus, five window. We just built this at my shop, Dream Reality Studios, and we're gonna go through the whole bus tour and show you all the cool features of this guy. And just so you do know, this bus is available for sale and the listing, the listing will be in the description below. So if you're interested in buying this bus, it is available for purchase, but let's show you what's going on with this bad boy. Let's talk about paint first. So I use an oil-based paint from Home Depot and it's a semi-gloss. So that way, if you ever need to touch it up, you can just paint right into it and you're not gonna see like orange peel or overspray. Really easy to work with. It's made for metal. We resealed all the windows so there isn't any leaky windows, which is really common in a bus. And then school buses are notorious for the roofs leaking. So we used a Henry's silicone tropical paint up top to seal up all the cracks and stuff like that. And you guys are probably wondering what this guy is. Now, this is the vent for our composting toilet. We have a fan in there and when you're doing a number two, hit a little button, fan blows the stinky out. Stinky comes outside to your neighbor, he smells it, not you. Moving along with the exterior, we do have my shore power port. You just plug a regular extension cord in there and it goes to a lithium battery tender, which will keep your battery topped off if, if you don't got solar or anything like that. And we do have, courtesy of Grape Solar, they sponsor the entire electrical system and they gave us 200, two 220 watt solar panels on the roof and then the rest of the stuff I'll show you in just a second. But also this is the exhaust for our diesel heater. One of the biggest things I feel like new bus people and van people do is they don't put a heater in right when they build their rig until winter hits and they realize they messed up. I've already learned this through three years of experience and basically that is the game changer of living in a vehicle. That's the exhaust for the heater so it sends all the fumes outside, climate temperature controlled, so you just hit a temperature in there and it'll kick on and off and keep it cool. Next up, let's keep going. This is underneath the bed of the Vin Diesel bus. This is the electrical system. Shout out to Josh from Crown and Style for helping me wrap this whole system up. So let's, let's start getting into it. Grape Solar, we have a 40 amp DC or 40 amp charge controller. Uh, again, Grape Solar sponsored that for us. All the normal stuff. This is our lithium battery tender. And then I use a Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger. So this bus can charge three ways. It can charge with the solar on the roof if you happen to have sun, which in the PNW I'd never depend on it. And it has the shore power port out there that connects to this battery tender. So if you're in your mom's front yard or backyard, you should plug that in, don't worry about the sun either. And then the other way is if you're on the road and there's no sun, this 40 amp DC to DC charger, as soon as the vehicle's on, it uses the vehicle's alternator to charge your battery. So this is the heater. That's the heater tank over here behind you. I And I, a lot of people like to tap into the diesel tank. It's just a big job and I kind of like having it separate because I end up going to a lot of places that are really, really remote and I really want my fuel in my tank to get out. So I like personally having the diesel for the heater in a separate tank, to be honest. So that's what that is. Over here, we have our Grape Solar 1800 watt inverter. Again, they sponsored that for us. And then Lenac, they are the battery sponsor for this bus. And this is a 150 amp hours of lithium battery. So Lenac Lithium, thank you guys so much for this battery. It works freaking great. It looks way cool compared to a lot of the stuff I've seen. And we, it's just 150 amp hours. That's, that's 50 more amp hours than I normally put in here. Shout out to them for hooking that up. And that is the heart of the electrical system. For safety features, you guys might be seeing this AFG Fireball. They're another sponsor of this build. And basically these are self detonating. So like if there happens to be a problem back here, this fireball will self detonate and hopefully put it out and I don't even need to be near the vehicle. It's a really nice peace of mind to have that. I'll put a link to the description to all the sponsors, uh, but this doesn't cost that much. I just hung it up here with a zip tie and like 
that could save your bus if you're not around. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, I have tried to lock the back doors on these buses 50 million different ways, tried a million different things, and you'll see a million different ways on the internet. And while we were coming down to the end of this build, I still wasn't sure how the heck I was gonna lock this back door. I went to Home Depot and knew that I was gonna try and figure it out, and this is what I came up with. So this is just a slide lock right here, and I bolted it through the handle, and I was like, oh, that'll be easy. I'll just put something like this on here. You know, it's a little, a little funky looking, but it works, right? And that's just a piece of two by two that I use a couple L brackets and self-tapping screws, and then you just slide lock that through that and that back door is not opening the reason i wanted to do it like this because i see a lot of people they do the the little class thing with the with the padlock right and then you can still move the handle up and down i just feel like because it is a school bus if somebody wants to get in it there's a million windows they're going to get in but i think mentally if they can't move the handle it just triggers them that it is locked and they just might not try as hard versus the handle being open and, and then their mind's like, oh, I wonder if I could pry it off. So that's, that's why I did this. So this way, the handle don't move, feels locked to an intruder. You know, it's, it works. <laughs> okay, welcome to this side of the Vin Diesel short bus. Let's get into it. This right here is our water fill door. So it locks so that somebody, an arch enemy, can't get in there and put something in your water tank, you know? So you can lock it, keep them people out. But I didn't put a lock on the fuel tank. Maybe I should do that. Uh, working our way over here, this bad boy is a on-demand tankless hot water heater. That means, like, you're not gonna run out of five gallons. You're gonna have hot water as long as you want it in this bus, which it does have a toilet and a shower, which we will show you in a little bit. Stay tuned for that. This thing is amazing. I've never had hot water in a bus before, and like, it's literally a game changer. This was also provided by Rec Pro, and I'll put the link in the description for them as well. Like, this thing is freaking amazing. $500, best 500 bucks I've ever spent in a bus. Awesome. Down here, we have ourselves a gray tank. That's a 15 gallon gray tank and it opens two ways. So it'll open manually if something goes up, with, goes down with the electrical system. And it also has a 12 volt switch inside that you can press a button and it'll release. So you never even got to touch it. Just press a button, has a ball valve, it opens electronically. If something does go haywire with your system, you just come down here and manually open it. 40 gallons of fresh in the back, 15 gallons of gray, I just don't really want to be carrying around 50 gallons of gray water. I think it's weight is a thing and like I'm just going to dump it. So I think that's it for the exterior of the bus. You guys ready to go inside? Huh? Before we go inside, let's talk about this door. I call this the school bus home door conversion. Check it out. Bam! Look at that. Swings, off, swings like a real door. Just like a real house. So the way I did this is I use C channel and I fused the door together and then I cut it out of that side and then I put this lock. So this is actually a dummy, dummy handle and then this lock will lock into this little deal from uh, right here. So you can have a key just like a house, kind of a little comfort of home. And then this deal, this is two by three we put in here. We had to take the metal jam out that was originally in there because I think some school bus driver somewhere totally ruined this whole thing. Like the metal jam was just all bent out and it was crazy. We had to bend this all back and it was just not usable. And I decided to put this two by three in here just to give it, I don't know, a different kind of vibe. And the whole, the whole building here is like a modern, rustic kind of industrial feel. I've never seen another bus like it, and I'm excited for you guys to come in here and check it out. Come on. Welcome to the inside of the bus. We're gonna show you the goods here in a little bit, but we're gonna start with the entryway. So the entryway, I buses come with this like black padded deal here, and I, I, it's kind of cool. Like I left it here for a reason, because you might hit your head on that. But I took this one out, and I cedar paneled it. Just. I don't know, kind of a throwback to the Scoliana bus. 
like the cedar panel entryway. And then, I don't know if you guys can see over here, but I added a little bit of wood accents to the C-channel. Just, I don't know, I think it looks kind of cool. So, kind of a different vibe there. We added this little hook deal right here. So you can kind of just throw your keys, knickknacks right here, which you want your keys in your rig pretty close in case you gotta dip out in the middle of the night. And then you can hang coats or towels or anything like that. So tiny little bit of hanging storage. And that's pretty much all we did up here besides taking out the whole school bus unit here, which I love because like it opens up two more cup holders. It's a big deal. But I, I really like school buses. So I like to leave a lot of the school bus pieces and make it look like a build in a bus versus somebody trying to make a bus a house. It's like two different vibes. I like schoolies for a reason. So I kind of build them a certain way. So that's it for this way. And now let's, uh, let's move into the build. I forgot to mention the privacy curtains up here. Again, I have tried so many different ways to block the windows out in these things. And one of the things I did in my van that I didn't like was because it's easy to close it off right here. It's just a straight run. So in my van, I blocked it off right here. And then this whole part was covered with a curtain at night, right? I, I, I think I like having it more open. But the other reason that I like to have the whole driver's area accessible is for safety. I was in a Planet Fitness parking lot one night years ago and some people were trying to get in my van at like three o'clock in the morning and I was completely blocked off from getting to the driver's seat. Uh, and I've always kept that in mind as I do build. So the privacy curtains, one thing, they're right here. They just snap, this will drop, cover that. And then the piece, this is another blackout curtain. There's just button snaps and it'll snap against this all the way around and leave this open. So if I am like in a sticky situation and I need to get out, like if they were right here and I come up in the curtain, they're gonna see me, situation's gonna get worse, right? But if they're trying to get in, they can't see me and then I can just boom, get the key in there, start the thing and take off. It's just a little bit better of a situation. So I don't like covering it from here. So privacy curtains are just button snaps and they snap across here. You can still get to the ignition, still get in the seat, get out, easy breezy. And then the thing I also like is I didn't have a place to store my front curtain in Schooliana. And now it just is right here in space that I wouldn't have used anyways. It's a nice place to keep it. Now let's get into the build. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever shower stall. I have ever installed in a school bus and I gotta tell you I didn't used to like them before I used to talk bad about them until I have one like this is almost as big as a game changer as putting a heater in your bus let's okay let's just talk into the build of it though because I'm gonna get crazy I love it love it hot water okay let's start by this we got ourselves so it's cedar paneled and I use a marine grade wood sealer and like pfft, it's waterproof i'll put a link to the varnish in the description but this is just cedar paneling uh so this is three quarter plywood that i use red guard to seal the plywood which is a water sealer then i put cedar panels over it and then i use a marine grade varnish to seal the cedar up and then i caulked it all in and then the water mixer is here and then this is just a pre-bought shower pan that happened to fit within a school bus window dimension. And this is copper tubing. And then this is the Nebbia shower head, which is really nice. Uh, and it's got a bunch of different settings, like really fancy, love it. And then up here, we cut a skylight into the shower, which wasn't part of the original plan. But when I put the shower pan in, it lifted the floor up like an inch and a half or two inches which I didn't account for and my head was hitting the ceiling in the shower which just wasn't going to work out so I decided to cut this in and now you can kind of look up at the stars or the trees when you're taking a shower it's really rad and then we put uh, privacy film on the windows so you know people aren't watching you scrub a dub dub while you're in the tub you know what I mean and uh, it's like a stained glass 
I just think it goes with the aesthetic of the whole bus. And one of the other features that I really like about this is this shower rod. So this shower rod, rod pops out and just gives you a little bit more elbow room inside of this small shower already. I seen this in a van build and I thought it was one of like the most functional things I've ever seen. This thing will pop out, give this little shower just a little bit more room. And then when you're done with it, it just folds right back in out of your way. And I thought about doing a door and all that stuff, but I just went with a simple shower curtain. I don't know. I think it, it kind of goes with it anyways. And then I just use rope, kind of give a little vibe tied up. So it's just a bundle of stuff. But I love this shower. Love it. I guess I should talk about the light in here, right? I started using these 12 volt silicone strip lights in my builds. And that light will go goes through the entire build on that whole side of the bus. And they're waterproof. I just thought it would look really clean to just have a, a line of light go through the whole build and into the shower. I don't know, it's just a design thing I thought would be kind of cool, but waterproof, this light in the shower, I don't know, vibes. All right, let's talk about the kitchen. One of the things too is, you know, a lot of the van people, they like to talk about how they have this, sh this thingy here, what do you call this, faucet, and it'll go out the window and they can take showers outside, which you have that option now. So you take a shower in the stall, take a shower outside if you want to get a little crazy. The water pump, you just turn it on right there and boom just two streams so it's got normal and then it's got a little whoop whoop and then cold and hot you know normal stuff going on there and then I just I always am in the habit of turning the water pump off and then taking the pressure off the system just think it helps minimize leaks in a moving vehicle. I don't know, it's just a habit thing I do. And then inside there is just a trash can and then the water heater. I'm not gonna show you that, it's ugly looking. And the propane tank is also under there. And I'm just in the habit of turning it on when I need propane and turning it off when I don't. Cause if it does start leaking, like it's not enough in the lines to do any damage. So that's kind of what I do. The countertop, so this is Live Edge Juniper. That was epoxied and then as you look over here it's kind of got some cedar two by fours and some other things going on i was kind of going so this this piece of live edge wasn't wide enough to to cover the whole cabinet and then i decided to come up with this like design with the help of my girlfriend jaylena she came up with this like red thing kind of like a a cutting board kind of vibe i don't know i think it looks really cool and I've never ever seen anything else like that before. So this is Live Edge with like some custom stuff going on. I love the countertop, honestly. Oh, let's turn that on. All right, so above the counter, we have a open shelf. Again, the light's going all the way through it. Oh, I should show you this about the light. It's uh, on off, and then it's also on a dimmer. So you can control how much light you want in, in your rig back to the shelf this is a big old open shelf right here like the reason I like open and nothing nothing's gonna fly out of there but the reason that I like open shelves is because sometimes when you have those closed shelves stuff just kind of gets buried behind things and you can't see it you forget what you got you're buying it two three times I've done that I like this because I can see what's physically there all the time I'd be like, I could be laying in bed and see, oh, I got coffee up there, I can get coffee. Oh, I got chips, like you can just see it. And like, that's a lot of food storage. So that's why I went with the open shelf. Plus I think it just goes with the theme of the bus as well. Okay, that's it for the shelf, let's move down here. All right, check out this stove, y'all. It's got a little glass, whoop whoop, which I don't know how safe that is. And then it's got three burners and an oven. And look at this. It's got fancy lights. I never had no oven that fancy. Again, that is a sponsor from Rec Pro. They also hooked up the water heater and they also hooked up this stove. <laughs> this thing is nice. I can't even really cook, but like for somebody who buys this bus, I can cook. That's a nice feature. And then I feel like you also have some counter space too. So 
a little bit of extra. You can turn the swag off. If you don't want that much swag, turn the swag on if you want a little more swag. Drawers. I have gotten a little bit better at making drawers. So we have this drawer, and they, these are just leather drawer pulls, and then wainscoting on half inch birch ply that's painted white. And we have, this is like a silverware, I don't know, whatever else drawer. And then this drawer is for pots and pans. Like, that's a lot. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have a pull-out pantry. Look at that. Stuff all, so there's just so much storage here for food and pots and pans and silverware, a lot. And then down here, I wasn't sure what to do with this space because the wheel well is right behind it. I don't know. I just made this little deal here. I figured you could put like cooking spray or something in there. But just instead of blocking this off, in a bus, you want to try and use all this space. So that's that's what we did here. I just made this like little alcove thing, I guess I'll call it. And you can put whatever you can fit in there in there. Okay, check this out. So this is a 12-volt fridge, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Set Power. I don't have it on right now because nothing's in it. And it's on locking sliders. So one of the things that happened in a lot of my old stuff is anytime I put a fridge on a slider, it would just slide out and blow up. These are locking. Push it in. Oops. That's locked. It ain't going nowhere, right? You have to unlock it to pull this out. And when you push it in, it locks. Super nice. The other thing is, Sometimes the, these are really heavy for the slider, so I actually have casters underneath this little cradle that support most of the weight. And so just three quarter plywood, casters underneath to support the weight, and then I use locking sliders to, uh, to kind of roll it in and out. That being said, little tip, if the fridge you're buying comes or has a $150 slider from the company made for it, just buy it. It may seem expensive, but think about it. These sliders were probably a hundred bucks. Casters were probably 20, 30 bucks. This plywood hardware, like I spent that already and then I had to make it. My advice in, in set power, also a sponsor of this build, so provided this fridge, really inexpensive fridges that work great. Uh, they actually have a slider for this fridge that I wish I would have known about, but I didn't. So I made all that. But yeah, if you need a, a inexpensive 12 volt fridge, look into set power, less than 500 bucks. And I've been using them for a long time. They work great. So that's it for the fridge. Boom. Let's talk about the bed area. One of the things I really, really like about the bed area so far is getting to the storage underneath. In, I've been trying to figure out the best easy way to do this. I've had doors that pull up. You gotta hold it open, nightmare check this out boom and it'll just stay open you could get in and out of here get whatever you want you could slide stuff through here and then check this out boom boom soft close you see that fanciness those little like hinges are expensive they're like eight dollars a pack i will never not use anything else though Super awesome. This is just half inch birch with cedar on top again. It's tongue oiled. Boom, let's hop up here. Ugh. This is a full size mattress. It's a Zenus, I think. Or it's made of, I don't know. It's, I'll put a link to the description. But anyways, it's a full size mattress. And I really like how open this layout is because this just turns into another area where I could sit, talk to my guests on the couch or dinette or whatever's going on over there versus being completely separated. Because the one thing I'll say is a lot of us build guest beds in our bus for friends, right? I'm guilty as well. But what we don't think about when we're doing that is most of our friends all have built out vehicles. So the amount of people that have slept on my guest bed are like, less than five. I like to have the whole space open. It's already small. This is something I really wanted to do in my Scoliana bus. And I, I love the way this feels because I can just sit here and hang out with people. 
Um, that's kind of what this half divider wall is. And then we have uh, brand new sheets back here, kind of match the outside of the bus. And then Pendleton, awesome Oregon company. They sponsored this really sweet Pendleton blanket. And I think it matches the vibe, super rad. Shout out Pendleton, thank you very much. And then back here, so I always kind of do this in my builds is I always put my curtains on a snap system in the back because it's just kind of weird angles and then you just roll it up back up and then everything else I'll show you the curtains on the rest of the bus later and they just snap up and hold so I always do these snap curtains in the back of the buses I don't know I just think it works the best and then up here there was an AC unit and there's just a big hole there so I had to do something to cover it up. I thought about doing a shelf, but I mean, I already have so much shelf back here. I didn't think it was necessary. So I kind of, I've never done this before, but I tried this like wood art deal thing here just to cover it up and just give it a little more, a little more flavor. Check these out. So again, these were holes from the AC unit where the tubes came in and out. And there's two big old holes there. And I was like, I'll just put some 12 volt fixtures over those, kind of use those holes and just, you know, have some light back here. So these are on their own switch in the bedroom. Just turn them on or off. And the cool thing about that is like, I can have the lights and the whole bus on. And then when I'm getting ready for bed, I come back here, turn these on, turn the lights off in the bus. And then when I'm in bed, when I'm ready to actually go to sleep, I just don't even have to get out of bed, press this button, turn the lights off, go to sleep. That was the idea behind that. Over here, it's closed storage. So this is a closed overhead cabinet. You could put, you know, stack clothes up in here. You could put a mirror. I was thinking you could put a mirror here if you wanted to have a mirror to do makeup for all y'all ladies or anyone that wants to put makeup on. You know, I'm not gonna discriminate. And then bam, so you got closed storage here. I had no intention of putting an overhead shelf over here. I was just gonna put the trim all the way, all the way through, but I decided it just seemed like a waste to not do it. Put an overhead shelf here, you can stack more clothes up there. And then also you have this chest right here. Tons of clothes storage. Here, 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 you can throw some junk in there. Lots. And I think that's, that's it for the bedroom, so let's keep moving that way. Everyone's gonna tell you, wheel wells and the buses suck. It's hard to build around it. So basically that's what this whole contraption deal is here, is a little platform over the wheel well. And what I've done with it is I've put the Kildwick composting toilet, which I think is really cool. A lot of people use those like plastic thousand dollar composting toilets i don't know not a fan like i like how this is wood these are imported from germany i just feel like they're the bmw of like composting toilets and then it's got you know the bucket in the back you got all your little stuff you put over your poop and then i have a urine diverter in here i have tubing that goes through all this out so when you pee you just pee in straight outside you don't got to catch it Another thing you're gonna hear about in bus life and van life is everyone overflowing their urine. Like, that ain't never gonna happen. Cause when I'm out in the woods, I'm peeing outside anyways. And I'm pretty much always in the woods. So I can just stay in the heat of my vehicle, have a nice little toilet, pee right outside, boom, cool, right? The other thing that's really rad, check this out. It's got an exhaust fan. So you hit that little 12 volt switch right there. Fan sucks this, the stinky out to that little vent out there to your neighbor. Remember that? So it's like, you can poop in here. Don't even smell like it. it smells like roses. You just turn that off, you shut this, and it doesn't look dumb. You know, if I just had a plastic toilet right here, it might look kind of dumb. That don't look dumb. That's got a vibe. So that's just sitting up on the platform. And then also underneath it, I'm running wires and things like that. This is where my diesel heater controller is at. This is the vent. This little thing will heat this whole bus up, no problem. And the controller's right here. And it's just on Velcro. 
so I could like pull it out and if I ever really wanted to, but I kind of have it set and I just turn it on and off. Also, we have our 110 outlets here with two USBs here and here. So one on this side for the dinette if I'm on the computer or doing anything like that. And then one on this side if I have any appliances I want to use in the kitchen. And you can turn your 110 on right here by holding the switch. Boom, lights on, turns it on. Hold it again, turns it off. Easy breezy. So that's like, I'll call this the toilet platform area. Let's go that way. Check this out. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a dinette booth. One thing I've also learned living in a bus for three years. So that's one thing I will say is I've lived in buses for years and I know what I wish I had and what I didn't and like this is the product of three years of me wanting certain things. And one of those things was I had a couch and I really, you know, just sitting across from someone and having a meal, like you don't realize how much that's a thing until you don't have it anymore. This is a dinette booth and this table will drop down into a guest bed. I know I talked about that earlier, but you know, I figured it would be nice to have it. This is three quarter ply with cedar and then it's been epoxy. Super nice tabletop. This is built all, everything in here is built out of two by three plywood and shiplap. This is a two by three frame shiplapped and I don't know, just a style with like uh, the trim wood on top. And then over here you have 12 volt DC on and off. So you can charge your phones, camera batteries, stuff like that. And you have a battery monitor here because I put the charge controller under the bed so you can't see it. But you can just take a look right here and see that our battery is at 100% right now. These cushions were professionally covered by Hannah Babs. She did an amazing job. And this was another Pendleton sponsor for the build. They gifted us this really sweet Pendleton fabric that we covered the cushions for the dinette with. Looks amazing. And this thing will drop down into a bed and then we keep the extra cushion for the bed underneath there. The re I was going to do like the normal thing everybody does where they have the cushion here and the cushion here, but it's like, I like the wood. I want to see the wood. So I did it this way kind of on purpose. And then you can, you can kind of use this two ways. You can sit on the cushion or you can put the cushion up here and put it on your back. But then you've got like wood and wool all in like the same, the same like visual deal. And then inside each one of the, uh, the dinette booths, you have storage and the whole piece of plywood just comes out. I guess I'll just show you. So whole thing comes out and then you've got like trunk storage in both of those dinette booths, which is way easier to get to than in the couch that I have done before. One of the other things that always leaks in a bus is the emergency hatch. You can fix it, you know, and, and they're cool to have for certain things, but I was in a bus that had a skylight and I really loved how much natural light it brought into the vehicle. And I decided I wanted to make a custom skylight and fill this hole where the emergency hatch used to be. And this is just three quarter ply. And then it does open and it'll vent because that's really nice too. It'll stay open like that. And you could be passing stuff. If you got somebody on the roof, pass the stuff in and out. Like if you're cooking, like such an awesome quick vent. And then, I don't know, I, I really like having the hatch that opened before. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. You let in all that light and get air in and out of here. So far, I really like it, honestly. And then it has this little clasp right here and boom, shuts. We completely painted the entire interior. So when this bus was gutted, we put brand new paint on all the sheet metal to, just to give it that really bright and like brand new feel. So it's all brand new paint inside here as well. I did the button snap curtains back there. 
just to really seal it up so people can't see in there. But like these are a lot of windows to do that for everything. So I typically in like the living area would just use copper piping like this. And then the curtains would just slide out because it isn't like so critical that this is super, you know, good. Good? I don't know. Just you can't. Back there in the bedroom, you know, you want it to be real sealed up out here. It doesn't matter so much. And this is a lot easier. And the way I hung these is it's just leather strap that I used a screw. Um, and this is just like a fancy screw cover. And then I just hung the copper pipe in it. Super simple. And then these just slide. So all this stuff slides. And then the front and the back all button snap. Okay, that's it for the Vin Diesel bus tour. Uh, this thing was took about a year from the time I bought it to finish it. I just had a bunch of other projects that kind of came up in between on this thing. I kind of like it. I like the layout. This was a test layout I wanted to try. It's an open concept. Like it has everything. Hot water, toilet, shower, oven, stove. And this bus is available for sale. It's a 2002 7.3 Ford Power Stroke short bus, five window, and I, if this bus does sell, I will put it in the description. If you're interested, there'll be a link to a link in the description for the listing for this bus. If you have any questions, let me know what's up. Let me know what you guys think about this layout and this build in the comment section. This is a layout that I've been dreaming of for years while I was living in a bus that I didn't like the layout of. I haven't been in this very long. I just finished it like this morning. Thanks for watching this tour. This is the Vin Diesel bus. It's done. I can't believe it. Dream Reality Studios. Isaac signing out. We'll see you in the next video. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at a bus life story. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more bus stuff or how to build bus stuff. Doesn't matter. See you in the next video. Bye.